All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about Filecoin. And this is just going to be mainly a um, just some of my thoughts about it, just about the project, just an intro. It's not financial advice. Uh, we're just going to be talking about the project and what they're doing. First, let's start in the verse of the day, guys. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Romans 12:10. Uh, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Guys, it's time to humble yourselves. Don't, <laughs> you aren't the biggest and baddest guy or biggest and baddest girl on the street. There's always going to be someone better. Humble yourselves. So let's get into it. Filecoin. So currently it's a price of 31 bucks. Uh, this one recently IPO'd, I want to say two months or three months ago. Yeah, it was back in October. It shot up. It was like a hundred bucks, and then it dropped down uh, to like twenty bucks, and then mainly leveled out. So you guys got to be careful with things like that. But it was actually a huge IPO. They raised like three or four hundred million dollars. So it was a huge project. Um, mainly, what they're looking to do is proof of storage, which is a whole new thing. Um, which is which it's crazy. So they're trying to beat out like Amazon or Google mainly the big cloud guys So here's Filecoin. This is a website Filecoin is a decentralized storage network designed to store humanity's most important information So let's play the video. See it's it's like a uh, Interactive thing. So centralized cloud services delivered around the globe uh, This leaves billions of users far away from their data. So mainly what happens is it allows companies to dictate prices, jurisdictions, and who can, because, because they mainly have a monopoly. You have no choice. So that's like going to the store and trying to buy uh, a gallon of milk and all you have is Publix brand milk or um, whatever other brand milk. You can't choose any others. So Filecoin connects the uh, world with this new storage model, no matter the level of existing connectivity. Uh, so mainly how they do that is the miners are penalized if they aren't online. So the miners or the uh, people storing on the network get paid to store the data and must be able to recall that information as quick as possible or whenever the company is requesting that. So here's an example like uh, the company is requesting it from someone or one of the miners, the miner sends it over. They pay a small transaction fee um whatever they agree upon so like the company will make that agreement with the miner so if the miner's like yeah i'll do it for this or yeah i'll do it for this it's, it's the same thing like with google and amazon uh when you're paying for data or like on gmail uh if you have to buy like 15 gigs of data or something it's like 8.99 a month or 5.99 a month it's whatever agreed upon fee so miners compete to win the storage contract so if one miner's like i'll charge you 10 bucks the other miner can be like, no, bro, I'll charge you five. Go with me. <laughs> so if the miner is like, oh, no, I'm going to start charging you 10 bucks, you can always move. So that, that's the cool thing about it. So the deal is made with the client. You have like a smart contract. They send data, pay the fee. It must prove, you must prove you're storing the files. If not, the miners, they have to stake their own file coin. So they'll have, so like say if the contract's worth uh, $1,000, the miner is going to have to be or going to have to stake like I think it's like three or four times the amount. So that way, if they are a bad actor or don't store the files properly or um, misbehave, they're going to be penalized and they'll lose their stake. So they, they're, they're staking or they're um, providing uh, proof of storage for the money. So it's not in their interest to... Um, be a bad actor because they'll they'll lose their stake. So they submit their storage proofs and new blocks on the network. Oh, another cool thing is you can uh, use multiple miners or multiple storage. So you don't have to just go with one guy. You can go with as many as you want at the same time. So miners earn uh, storage fee. Um, let's see, so proof of storage. They go through the storage. You guys saw the infographic. So mainly self-explanatory but this is looking to be um web 3 so it's basically like the next generation type of internet so here's how it retrieves files a client wants a file so it calls on a miner the client selects the fastest or most affordable miner hey johnny give me that paperwork yeah sure it'll cost you two bucks i'll send it over 
Client pays a miner, retrieves the file. Boom, gets the mi or gets the file, and nice. So there's two incentives. There's uh, or two different things going on. You have miners that um, retrieve the files and send them, and then you have other guys who are storing the files. So there's two ways to get paid. So other miners can pick it up and rehost it. So this is almost like uh, the company Fastly. Um, I'll explain that in a second. So this kind of displays how it's distributed. So from small mining, mining rigs to advanced data centers. So you can have a, like a main hub that goes out to like sub miners and then those miners go out to different people, which is basically what Fastly does. It's a company. Um, I'll talk to you guys about Fastly. First, let's go into this. So Web 1.0, you guys, I don't know if you're, if you saw it, you, you're, I guarantee you're around, you probably just don't remember it. Um, is like Netscape. You type in something, you get information, you read it, that's it. It's not like YouTube or Google images or videos. It's something that's just like a quick search. So like here's like Yahoo, very basic, nothing fancy. This is like Web 1.0. And then we go into um, Web 2.0, which is going to be like your YouTube, Google, Facebook, uh, Amazon. So that's something like with cloud storage and it's something that's more uh, interactive um, you can kind of communicate with it better it's not just you get it you get information you read it and then you have web 3.0 which is going to be like your blockchains or um, well, like this um, the uh, file coin so it's going to be like computers communicating with each other so it's computer to computer instead of uh, being like person to computer computer and calling upon it so it's more like artificial intelligence um oh that's what i was going to talk about so what's fastly all right so what's fastly fastly here's a couple of their um companies they work with they work with like stripe a and e buzzfeed so mainly what happens is say i'm calling on a website so i go visit the website um i go to google or I go to Amazon. As soon as I click on that website, it's got to load. So this video will probably play it as well, but it's got to load the data. So as soon as I'm calling on it, I need that data. And if there's a thousand people calling on that data at once, it's going to bog down the network and it's going to make the website slow. So what Fastly does is it contracts with like Google, Stripe, Amazon, PayPal, or any other company and says hey look we'll store files or we'll store your website that way when someone calls they'll call for our server instead of yours and not bog down your network um, this video will probably show you here it is so this this is what it talks about so you have the users right here so let's see so here's the user and originally it was going to like the origin so say you're going to user to Google now you got a billion users going to Google and it's like, oh man, we can't handle this. So now what Fastly does is it does a cloud storage and now the user's calling on Fastly and not Google directly. And Fastly has a bunch of different storage networks and that's what they specialize in. So I'm sure Stripe's not specializing in um, edge cloud computing, uh, allowing people to draw on data. No, they specialize in payment processing. Remember, do what you do best, do it well and let everyone else do the rest. Uh, so here, these are some of their partners, Shopify, Slack, Wikia, uh, Pinterest, Gannett. So they got a bunch of um, big partners. Fastly, I actually like this company. Um, it's a really innovative technology. Um, so now let's get into the main thing or the, the potatoes or meat and potatoes of this project. So this talks about IPFS uh, powering the distributed web. Uh, we can see how it works. Basically... Uh, how IPFS works is your file and all the blocks within it are given a unique fingerprint. So mainly you have your own file and your own identity. It gets rid of duplication. So just like a fingerprint, you only have one fingerprint. Each node stores only the content they're interested in. So if you have one guy who's wanting to store like art files and another guy looking to store payment transactions, you can go to each one when they specialize, just like a utility company. You don't go to Tico Electric, well, uh, the Tampa um, Electric Company, or yeah. So you don't go to Tico for getting a um, water line set up. No, that's, they don't specialize in that. So when you look up a file, you're asking the network uh, to find that file. So that's where you're paying that hash. 
So just like in Bitcoin, you provide the proof of work and so on. Um, you don't need to remember the hash. Every file can be found in human, human readable names. So basically, instead of having to go through like coding and all kinds of stuff, um, this is more of an uh, easy to read um, system. So with the project itself, so just like you have Ethereum gas fees when you make a transaction, it's the same thing with um, uh, Filecoin. So Filecoin, your transaction is going to be calling on that file, and that's where you're going to pay that fee to the person you're contracting with. Or um, just in general, if you store it on different uh, nodes, you can just call for it in general and we'll send it to you. So Filecoin um, is backed by Protocol Labs. They're working on building um, the uh, Web 3.0 internet, basically just decentralization of the internet. Because between me and you, oh, actually with everyone, you really don't own the internet or control what you see. Google, Amazon, Facebook, the big tech, the big data controls what you see. If you wanna see something, you got to go through Google, Amazon, or Facebook, and they control what you see. That's why there's several lawsuits going on with them right now. So you can learn about Protocol Labs if you want. Just go on their website. I'll leave a um, link in the description. Uh, so let's go to Filecoin. Ah, here we go. All right. So how mining works. Um, miners are the participants of the network. Uh, so this is mainly you just... There's two types of see the types of miners. You have storage miners, you have retrieval miners, and repair miners. These aren't implemented yet, but these are the different miners I was talking about. So you have the guys who are getting paid to store, pays or guys to get paid to get data. You can read more about this. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, deals. So these are agreements between the client and the miner for storage. Um, the rewards are flexible, so you you determine what they are. Um, let's see, hardware. So if you guys are looking to become a, um, a miner or the, uh, proof, of, uh, not a miner, but proof of storage or a miner just in general, just like getting the transactions, you can learn about the hardware requirements here, what you need on your CPU, um, eight core CPU, you're going to need a lot of Ram. Um, well, not a lot, but it's going to be a higher amount of RAM, so you want to have a computer that's pretty fast. Um, these just tell you the different recommendations on it. Uh, disk space. Um, here's some operation requirements. So you guys can look it up, uh, look this stuff up yourself. If you guys want to figure out if it's profitable for you, if you want to go with that. I'm not like a, a tech geek, <laughs> so I'm just telling you about this project um, and what 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 you can be getting into or how it works. So here's some of the mining architectures. Um, here's some of the different nodes. I know some of these devices, they're expensive, somewhere a couple thousand bucks. Um, here's the same thing with the rewards. Um, yeah, so the same thing. So instead of being storage on the mining, you're getting paid for uh, sending that over. Um, Retrieval fees. Okay, so these these are paid uh, using payment channels. Um, so mainly these are off chain, and these are determined based on like what the agreements are, or you can find some with the cheapest fees. So it, it's something you can actually shop around, just like with Google and Amazon. They have their one fee. You can't really shop around much. There's not much a there, there's no choice to choose from. This is what I was talking about with slashing. So if there's malicious actors or people who are trying to um, mess with the system, there's fault fees, penalties, termination fees. So there's tons of fees. So it, it's mainly not not for the guy trying to get um, the data. He's, he's not going to be uh, hurt with the fees. So it's more like um, the customer is always right in this situation. So if you're a miner or a storage guy, you're basically an employee. You are not the uh, customer. The customer is the guy buying the storage space, and you guys are going to be treated very well if you are using this. Um, same thing, uh, Lotus Miner. This talks about how you can set one up, all the systems you need to download. So if you guys want to uh, do that, you guys can look into this. Um, yeah, so you can go through this. Let's see if there's any... 
So this talks about like minor life cycles. Uh, they're probably different for different brands like NVIDIA or um, Western Digital, etc. But yeah, um, so that these are the uh, main things about the project and uh, what you can be getting into. Um, I'd recommend looking up Protocol Labs and uh, what they're looking to do. Uh, read more about their company. Filecoin in general um, is a decentralized protocol. Or well, let's sum it up. It's a decentralized protocol. Basically um, trying to decentralize the storage, uh, especially uh, with all the issues coming about. So Bitcoin came about because the 08 crash. Um, it kind of showed how we had bad money and how it could just easily be printed. So that solved that issue. So in my opinion, what Filecoin is doing is it sees Google, Amazon, Facebook, all the big tech companies just having a huge monopoly on it and controlling whatever happens. And Filecoin's getting ahead of that and they're like, that ain't right. We need to decentralize this. So that's all about Bitcoin too and um, cryptocurrencies is they're looking to decentralize everything mainly. So if you guys like this video, go ahead and smash that like button. If you guys dislike it, hit that dislike button. If you guys have any questions or comments about Filecoin, leave them in the comments below. If you guys also haven't subscribed to the channel, I mean, I don't know why you're waiting. Hit that subscribe button. You get to learn about more cryptocurrency videos. If you guys don't want to subscribe, that's cool. Uh, just go ahead and leave a comment about why you didn't like this video or why you liked it or what your opinions are on Filecoin. Guys, I know your time's valuable. Thanks for watching. Um, thanks for tuning in and enjoy the rest of your day.